everyone. <laughs> How are you all doing on this beautiful Sunday? I hope all is well. Say hi on the chat if you can. Um, so today we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to leave ZBrush <laughs> for a while. Hi, Khalil. Hello, Jace. Logan. Hello, Tassiz, you yai. <laughs> Willem. Willa. So, hi, Daria. Hi, nice to see you. Natalia, how's it going? Nice to see you all here. Ready to learn and try stuff with me? Taina, hi. So, we're gonna leave ZBrush. Senor, hi. Khalil, no ZBrush. Well, we might we might still do some ZBrush. I figured it out. Like, I don't know if you guys remember last week we were doing the little uh, petal thing on her her dress and um, I tested out with nano mesh and I got better results than doing by hand. So I can show it how I use nano mesh to do that. I think that would be interesting for everyone. Mateus, yay Mateus. And um, yeah, so I think I, I'd, I'd rather just show the nano mesh part first so you guys can see how I solve that, that dress part. And then we can go to Maya, do some rainy there, come back to ZBrush, test if the pose is working well, etc. Cool. All right. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Leticia Gillett. Welcome to my channel, The Archetype. And uh, this is sponsored by Lenovo. Thank you, Lenovo. And we're going to be continuing our project. Hi, Nandi. Andrew, what's up? Um, yeah, so if you guys have any questions, always send in the chat and I'll try to see as much as I can while I'm working, but you let me know. Before we start though, I want to show you all like this cool new toy I got. <laughs> Look at this. I got this. It's like a collectible for Kubo. This is one one also same size for Coraline, but they're out of stock, so I need to wait. But look at how cool. So I got this on a Leica shop website. It's from Leica, the mold, but it says made in China. So they probably manufacture in China. And it's cool because the, his, his strings are real. His strings are real and stuff. I mean, get back in focus. Okay. And uh, it's just super cool. So if anyone is a fan of Kubo, I highly recommend. Very good quality <laughs> toy. All right. That movie was stop motion, right? Most stop motions now, they do use a lot of 3D, though. Um, sometimes the stop motion part is mainly on the main characters, some parts of the set. And a lot of it is 3D to look like stop motion, you know? So they still use a lot of 3D. Cool. All right, let's start. So I'm gonna show you guys how I use Nano Mesh. I don't know if you ever, I'm, I'm no expert on Nano Mesh. I'm just gonna be very honest with you guys. I was just like clicking and testing and, and seeing where I could get, but this is the result I got. So. Let me put it here. And okay, so this is our girl. And this is kind of the result I got, which I still want to go by hand and move a few just a little bit so we don't get so organized like this. So I'm gonna change, but before I did that, I wanted to show you all how I did that. So here I have the the before with the nano mesh not applied yet. What I'm going to do, I'm going to duplicate and I'm going to turn off Nano Mesh. Delete actually. Let's see here. Okay. So, how do we use Nano Mesh? Um, again, like I'm no expert, I was just playing around. My tablet's working. One second. 
I was just playing around trying to figure it out. I watched a few tutorials and then I got to that result. So the way I found it out, if we look here in my topology, so what I did is I made this topology and tried to make them as square as possible. You can see the bot bottom here is a bit more square, but then up here is a bit, it's fine, totally fine. And you can see also that I did some polygroups like um, um, uh, um, alternating, right? So I have one and then blue and then green. Just came from Instagram, love your work. Yay, nice to see you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind word. So you can see that if you want to do a, a, this kind of offset here, like you see that my things are offsetting, meaning let me get my Epic pen. So I can explain. You can see that I have a row here, right? Do, do, do. Change the color. But then this is offset, right? They're not like perfect one after the other, after the other, after the other. They're offsetting. So if you want to do that, you have to create um, this rows of poly, uh, poly groups. And I'll, I'll explain why in a bit. Actually, let me show without it. And then you all can see. So I'm just gonna make one big poly group now. See, no more separation. And then we're gonna do the separation and I'll show you. So now what we have to do is in a separate tool, you have to make a shape, any shape that you want to be propagated on a nano mesh, right? So I just made a sphere because I was going to like squish the sphere anyways. So I just made a sphere like this. But it could be anything, it could be a flower, it could be literally any, any model that you want. Right, so I'm coming back here and then we're gonna use NanoMesh. So um, the way to use NanoMesh, you're gonna, we're gonna go to the Zmaller. So BZM, right, we go to Zmaller brush. And then on top of the face, I'm gonna hold space bar and I'm gonna put insert NanoMesh. That's simple, okay? I'm gonna go insert nano mesh, and down here is gonna say a single poly. No, that's not what I want. I want every poly, so I can say all polygons. Boom. And now, how do we? How does nano mesh know which object to use? That's a great question. That's something I, I learned watching the tutorial. Is that you press M, and it's gonna show all your tools. And then you select. So I'm going to use this polysphere here. Boop. So now NanoMesh knows what to insert. And if I click and drag, you can see it's all getting uh, born. Born. It's all getting born inside the poly. Okay. So you can do whatever size you want. We're going to change stuff. Doesn't matter the rotation. We can, we can change everything. So I'm just going to increase like this. And now we have nano mesh for every face. Uh, and this is all instance object, right? So when if we change one, it's gonna change it all. Cool. If you guys have any questions so far on the process, let me know in the chat. So if I go now to the nano mesh tab, you can see nano mesh is on, and there are a bunch of interesting stuff here to play. But the first step we're gonna do, I'm gonna reset the rotation, any rotation that when I click and drag, create it. So if we go here to rotation, you can see zero, zero, and this minus 92. I'm just gonna put zero again. And now there's no rotation on our sphere. They're perfect. Cool. And we can start like literally what I did, I just start clicking and playing with this uh, attributes. For example, if I want to uh, change the height, of it, I can go here to height, and you can see that what we want is, is more flat like this, right? So you can make it more spiky, That that's kind of interesting, right? Like this, uh, you can change the shape here. That's why I didn't model like flat, because I when I was playing with it, I just uh, made sure to do that. So let's say we're gonna do a little flat like this. Boop. Cool, so now we have that. And then we could potentially like change the size. So let's say like here, there's a ton of gap going on. So we can go to the size 
and we can just increase or decrease the size of our little thingies. So I'm going to increase, but you can see that up here it's getting pretty intense. And this is one cool thing also. You have different ways to propagate the sphere on the face. So right now I'm just saying proportion, which means that all spheres are the same size. But if I click on fit, you can see that they now try to fit the whatever object you have to the polygon size, which is kind of like what I want. I'm just going to make a bit bigger because I want them to overlap a little bit. So why that? Because I want to, um, I'm going to smooth. So they're going to shrink a little, right? So you can see here, uh, now we have that. So, but because they all in the same poly group, unfortunately, I cannot offset stuff because how the nano mesh is going to know, right? And that's why ideally you would use the um, poly group so we can control the roles of it. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's go back again. If you didn't get what I did so far, you're going to see it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate a few rows like so. So now I have different poly groups, right? And uh, I'm going to go to the Zima brush. I'm already in. But instead of using out polygons, I'm going to use poly, um, which one is poly group all, right? So it's going to go by poly. So now you're going to see, for example, if I click on the green one, it's only getting born on the green one, see? Not on the other, which is nice. So you can see that the other ones save that one. Then we, I'm going to grow here. I can have it different. Here you go. And you can see that I have two rows now to control. Okay. And you can have as many poly groups as you want to control it. So you can see up here now there's like an index thing. If I go back to zero, I'm going to control the ones that we did previously. If I go to one, I'm going to control this one. So, but they're all different now, right? So if I go back to zero, I can just say copy. So it's going to copy all the settings we did. And I go back to index one, paste, and now they're all big thing. Hyper chunk. So you can see here, but now we can control offset stuff, right? We can control a bunch of cool stuff, actually. So for example, if I go back to index zero, uh, yeah, it's magic. It's annoying magic. Hard to do magic, yeah? but it's magic. So if I go back to zero, index zero, for example, okay, um, I can rotate instead of being flat on the polygon, right? Let's say I want to rotate so they look like scales. There's like one coming out of the bottom of the other. We can go to rotation and see uh, what kind of rotation we need. So you see here. Like I'm using rotation and it's, look at how interesting it's like doing kind of like a random rotation. But I don't have anything turned on as random here. So it's kind of weird, right? So what I figured out after suffering is that, hi, Vinicius, hi. Uh, if you go to alignment down here, it says no alignment. So that's why the rotation is going all doing whatever they want. But we can say, for example, aligned by the normal. So now you can see what's going on. Or we can say aligned by long edge or by short edge, whatever. So I'm going to do aligned by short edge, which was the one I learned to do like a, the best way. And now we can uh, try to see what we need to do, right? So like, this is what I, I just want them to go up a little. So I feel like the other ones are coming from underneath. Maybe it's a bit too much. Let me just do a little less down. Something like this. No, let me put minus 20. Yeah. And we can, again, like copy the properties and then go to index one and paste. And now they all have that kind of like, angle going up okay yeah, yeah yeah cool so now they're they're kind of like scales right like going um coming from the bottom which is nice 
But then how do we do the offset? Right? So if I go to index one, which is the one I want to offset, we do have offset values here. See? So I just need to test which one is it. So let's try X. Oh yeah, see what's going on. But it's funny, like if you do too much, it kind of like breaks the shape. I don't know much why, but I just want a little bit of offset. There's not much, so um, that's it, really. So I didn't break too much, as you can see. And that's basically how I did it. Let me go back to zero. Okay, so we're in zero. I'm just gonna do loop this much. And then now we have the offset. So by offset, if you don't know what I mean, it's just this, like you have one here. Whoops, let me get a different color. You have one here. And then instead of having one below, one below, like going in a straight line, you have one and then offset to the side and then the back here and then offset to the side. So that's more like organic, right? And you can play with other parameters, like you can create a little bit of randomness and such. But I'd rather do the randomness by hand. So this is kind of like what I did. And then if you want to commit to this, let's say I want to commit to this, you can just go to, where is it? Inventory, yeah, inventory here. And then you can say one to max, Bop. and you gotta click twice because we have two index, right? We have two rows, so you need to click for each row. And now you can see that that's committed. Look at that. And if I press D for dynamic subdivision, you can see what happens. Yay, this is actually better than the one I did before. So that's how I did it. And then like I said, I'm gonna go by hand and just like break a little bit so it doesn't feel so organized and such. I can get the color, fill it out. And now we have those scales that we wanted going on. And again, like now they're just pure geometry. They're not in this anymore. So if I wanted to start moving um, stuff around, I can. They're not, they don't have any attachments in a no mesh anymore. Cool. So again, like I said, like if I wanted to just like start like, oh, this one's going to be a bit longer, this one's going to be a bit shorter, blah, 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 and start creating, like, more variation. Um, that's how I would do it. But um, this is not what we're going to do today. This is just a little thing for you all to see. If you knew Nanomash before, great. If you didn't, there is a very cool potential to do a lot of fun stuff, especially using the polygroup, because then you can create the index stuff. But we're going to do some uh, quick rig in Maya. And uh, just so I know, how many of you use Maya? Like, uh, or yeah, how many of you are Maya users or Blender? If you use Blender, you can say on chat Blender. If you don't use any, you just use ZBrush. You can, you can say that too. Let me save a version. Okay. Cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our boy, this boy here, and we're gonna go to Maya and do a quick rig on it. So we can uh, Maya mainly blender. Okay. Number four D. Nice. Yes, Max. Cool. Okay, he has some shorts, so that's cool. The Z brush. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use uh, a tool specific in Maya that's called the Human IK, but. Most softwares like Blender, like Max, I don't know much about Snow 4D, so I can't speak for it, but uh, a lot of them, they do have some sort of a, a similar thing like Human IK, okay? Which is kind of like a simple rig just to do a quick pose on stuff. So, first of all, before we go, 
I'm going to open some UVs. Okay, so I open UVs for at least for this personal project stuff. I open in here in ZBrush. So it's going to do the body here, separate front from back. Whoops. This separate the front from the back. I don't have to do this because I like it. I like to have it separate like this. Then, yep, well, there's some polygons here. Just do a prop. Oops. But now it's half half. Nice. Not to cut your flow, sorry. Uh, what? In Blender, it's called MetaRig. Nice, yeah, MetaRig. Um, yeah, Max has its own thing. I think it's called like iPad or something. I don't remember anymore. Um, did you do Zero Mesher or design the topo? For this personal project stuff, I just used Zero Mesher because, you know, it's just going to be an illustration. It's not going to be for animation. So because it's for an illustration, yeah, I don't need to worry about topology too much. So it's just Zero Mesher host. And no worries. You can ask anything anytime, okay? <laughs> All right, so I got my UV, my separations. So now, just on the foot here also, I'm gonna do just a bit better to separate the bottom of the foot from, from the top. That's something I I do when I'm doing real UVs, right? So I'm just thinking about what can I do to make this the most uh, similar thing. Cool, so now I'm just gonna go here, select this polys and this poly row here. All right, so now it has a different UV set for that. Hello, Alan. Cool. So now, how these UVs are exported to other program? They are exported together with the model file or as a jog file? They go together, Matthews. They go together. So, so what I'm gonna do here, I could separate the ears as well and do a bunch of separation, but I'm not too concerned. So now that I have the poly groups and I'm in the lowest subdivision level, I can go to Z plugin, uh, UV master, and I'm gonna turn on poly groups because I made them. I know my model is symmetrical, so I can keep symmetry on. I'm just gonna say unwrap. It's gonna go around. Doo -doo -doo. And now we can see all UVs. It out. You know, so they're just like unwrapped. There's no organization or anything. But again, this is just for illustration, it's not for animation, so that's all I need in life. Alright. Now we did that. Uh let's export. So I'm just wondering if I should export one level up or I should do no, I'm gonna do the low res. The low res is pretty dense, so it should be fine. So I'm going to export everything actually that is in here uh, and we can see them all in Maya. Cool. Um, all right. So some stuff I'm using the dynamic thickness in ZBrush, right? So it's going to go as paper to Maya, but it's fine. We're not going to stay Maya. So Z plugin, I'm going FBX. I export FBX because it goes everything inside one file. So I'm just gonna say, here we go. Um, this is a crowd character, so crowd uh, for rig zero. It's gonna go around. Your voice is amazing. Thank you. I sound like a cartoon character. Most people say. I don't know if that's what makes you happy. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, let's open Maya. It's been a while since I've been 3ds Max, but Max has a tool like this that's very good as well. I know Blender has it. I'm sure Cinema 4D also has it. So I think I updated Maya, that's why it's taking a little longer. Yeah, it says Maya 2022. 
I don't even know if I opened this version yet. I might break everything now. Okay. Cool. And let me just place this around here. Okay. So now, easy peasy, just gonna go file, import, my desktop, where is it, Nomen, Rebel, and then I have my model here. Cool, as you know, because I started in ZBrush, right? Um, the model comes very tiny and normally not placed correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group everything. I should have organized a little bit in ZBrush, but it's good when you don't do it so you guys can see how I go around the situation. So from front view, just looking here, gonna push it up like so. And I'm gonna scale this up. Um, well, I don't think I can do that because my ZBrush file. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not gonna scale. I'm gonna have to work with this tiny scale, which is fine. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna be fine. So so now I reset everything. Freeze the transforms. I don't need the group anymore. Okay. Um, okay, what program they use inside Disney to read and animate? Um, I think they, well, I don't know if I can say it, <laughs> but uh, it's independent of the program. They're, they create their own tools inside that program and it becomes something completely different. <laughs> like they just create their own tools, like I said, so it's not... It's not like vanilla, any software that they use. They create a bunch of tools to support the rig there. Uh, hey, get viewers, follow, and prime. Okay, I don't need that. <laughs> I'm good with my people. All right, so I'm gonna do some poly paint here. Bring the poly paint in. Uh, and it, it looks funny, it looks different to poly paint. It's because um, the ace, thing here on the viewport. I'm just gonna turn it off and we can see it. Cool. All right, so now let's put some rig on this. And I didn't name anything. And you guys have seen like the worst case scenario. <laughs> in general, I would name everything very pretty. I would adjust the scale in ZBrush, but let's see what we can do with being dirty, right? Doing things the wrong way. And that will be good because we'll see if anything that happened that we need to go around it cool all right so to create the rig i'm going to go up here on the top there is a little man body thingy it's going to click this is the human ik uh, menu so we can click create skeleton it's going to create a ginormous skeleton because our model is very small Again, let's see what we can do without changing, uh, having to change our model. Cool. So now you can act, you can actually voice act for the boy. Yes. <laughs> gonna be long. It's super interesting Disney hair soft tonic. Seems really neat. Yes, it is very neat. Wish they would. Uh, we would have it <laughs> to use. So I'm gonna put point one. So here on the scale is gonna be the scale of your body, right? That your rig. Because our character came super small, I'm gonna have to keep scaling him down until we get closer to the size of a character. I'm just putting point one, point one, point one until we get to a size closer to a character. Here. All right, so this is uh, starting to look a bit closer. I'm gonna turn on X-ray. Oops, where is X-ray again? Dup, dup, no, I always forget. Okay, here we go, this one. And now I can put maybe points. All right, so this is very close to where we need stuff. 
Cool. And now we're just gonna um, put the bones. Let's see from the side view if it is centered or not. We can get the whole character rig reference and just move it back to be more aligned to the center of the model. You mean for, for modeling, Logan? Okay, so this first bone is the clavicle. So I'm just gonna keep it right there. And again, I'm gonna hide some of the clothes because ideally you don't do with the clothes on, you do with the body so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna get this bone. And again, like the main thing about when you're doing dirty rig is make sure that your joint, it's kind of like equal distance from uh, the boundary area, you know? If, you, if possible, right? Here obviously is not possible. Like my boundary area goes until here. But if possible, you put the joint right where it's like center. If you put like a little sphere like this, kind of like centered. That's uh, one thing I learned about, right? How do you export poly paint? It's actually a little script I made, Galen. Galen is asking like, how do you turn on the poly paint in Maya? It's a little script I made. Uh, if you Google like uh, how to visualize poly painting Maya, um, you might find other people's scripts to use. I would suggest that is fun. It's nice to see. So, do that. Can you show us how to adjust the scale in ZBrush? Sure. Yeah, we can adjust them. Um, okay. So I'm gonna put this in the center, kind of like like I said of the mess, and then. Rotate down like so, and we could we can scale this kind of like around here. And again, I need to see where kind of it's gonna be the the turning point of it, kind of like about here. And then I can get yeah. Be careful not to break the bones, right? So. Some stuff you cannot just move whatever you want. You gotta rotate a little. Now I can get the wrist. Just move it kind of like here. Scale the hand. Let's see what's going on. Again, like this is not at all, at all, at all. Please understand. Not at all a clean rig, okay? What I'm doing here is a dirty rig just to pose things a bit easier than doing in ZBrush. That's it. I'm not doing a rig for animation. Again, I'm doing a rig for illustration, which is just to create one, two, three poses and call it good. Okay? So, understand that. All right. So, for the fingers, um, just gonna put them from view. And because it's a dirty rig, we don't need to go too crazy about like uh, the rig being perfect, you know, and uh, working perfectly or anything like that. Again, like I might even not get a very good result on the hands from the rig, which is fine. We can just um, fix it in. What I like to do basically is like, I like to create the rig. And then I'll fix it in uh, ZBrush later. Okay. So actually, this bone needs to go back here. So I'm just gonna, um, if you guys have any questions, like I'm not gonna explain exactly, you guys know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to put things into place and I did it all wrong. This and um, again, I'm just not claiming I'm a rigger. I'm doing a quick rig for for us to um, do a quick pose. Uh, what is a clean or or dirty rig? Uh, 
uh, dirty rig is what I'm doing here. Like I'm doing pretty. Um, I'm not being too careful. I didn't. I don't have like p perfect edge loops to support the rig either. Like I have like you know zero mesher topology. So even if the rig was great with the zero mesher topology, there's so so much that you can do. But what I'm doing here is like I'm not aligning things perfectly. I'm just like placing as close as possible to the joint and hoping that's going to work. That's basically what I'm doing. Um, all right, let me get. So thinking about like this is going to be the center of the finger and then we have the next phalange. It's, oops. A little more back. So I'm just kind of guessing instead of measuring things, you know, uh, which is not how you should do it. That's for sure. But again, this is not a rig for um, it's a rig for real illustration. So I'm not too concerned. This is what we call a dirty rig. Then. And you can do this, like I said, using any of your favorite software. It's just I feel more comfortable doing this in Maya, so that's why I'm doing it here. So, Gambia, yeah, Nanji, aka Gambia, for sure. Okay. Like a clean rig would be like, they would really use the edges of the topology to align the bones. So they know that's gonna be super clean because it's exactly on the edges of the topology. There's way more to it than this nasty thing I'm doing here, where I'm just like, I don't even know if I have topology to support some of this stuff. So it's gonna look, you, you guys gonna see when I, when I bind the skin on it, you're going to see what it's, how dirty it is. But again, it's not like I want the result of my rig to solve everything. Like I'm doing it and then I'm going to go to ZBrush and I'm going to clean it there. The pose, I'm going to clean it there, the pose. So um, this is just like to do, let's say, like primary feeling of the pose. And some people might say, oh, it's not worth it going to Maya then to do this. And it might be the case. That's why like I go um, project by project. Like some projects, like remember the one I did for the innocent character? Some projects you, I just model in pose already. Some I like to put the rig. It's just up to you. I like to do it because I feel like I'm learning different ways to do it, etc. So we have the whole arm aligned, which is nice. Let's align the leg now. So for the leg, I'm just, again, like I'm trying to get the center of mass of the position. So if I think about here, if I do like this, I can kind of see like the distances. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it helps if you put on the center of the mass for sure. So, and obviously you need, need to see where the knee is, which kind of worked perfectly. And then my foot, I model my foot rotated outwards a little bit. So just need to rotate this out. And then this, this is like the end where it would bend your foot. So this is where I'm putting here, right here. Okay, let's look from the side. Yep, maybe we can just a um, little up here just for the knee. And then, right, so for the spine here, uh, what I like to do in this is like, you see that some bones are a bit smaller here. So you can think about how we bend Right, mainly here on the center, we have a lot of bending going on. So what we could do is, um, 
Oh, actually, this this bone is pretty good there. I'm not gonna change it. And this is the neck. So obviously, we need to move this to the base of the neck here. Looking from the profile, so we can see. So this will be the base of the neck, and this will be. Oops. What have I done? What have I done? Ooh. Let me zero this out. Okay, back to place. And now I'm going to just put on the base of the neck here, the head. Boom. Again, like trying to be in the middle of the mask. All right, so when you do one side, if we go back to our uh, rig here, we can say mirror. So normally they mirror from the left to the right, right? Like of the character. So this is the left, this is the right. Um, so we can just click it, it's gonna mirror it. You can see now. Yay. And it's always good to save. Here, rig, zero one. And now we can uh, bind the skin basically. So now that we've finished our bones, I'm gonna bind them to our mesh. Uh, so the way to do that, I'm gonna hide the clothes now. Oops. Uh, just so we can see just the body. See just the body. And then uh, the way I like to do it is just I select all the bones. And then I select the body. And you have to go to the rig tab here, rigging. And I'm going to say skin, bind skin. And there are a few things that I change here on the skin bind. So by default, there's a bunch of things here. I'm, I'm not going to explain why I change these things because, you know, it's going to take a long time to explain the math behind it. But because I selected all the, bo all the bones, I'm just going to say select the joint. Binding method. There are many binding methods here. One I really like to use is the heat map or geo, geodesic voxel. So let's try the voxel to see what happens. The method classic linear or dual Cartesian. I could show that the difference after we bind, but it doesn't matter much. Just do dual Cartesian. Uh, let me remember. Yep, yeah, this is all the same. And the this one is interesting. It's asking like, what are how many bones do you want to influence an area? It says five. That's too much for me. I like to put three. Again, I'm not going to explain much, but. I'm just gonna say apply and close. And it's gonna bind everything. There's no error, so it means that everything went well, hopefully. And now here's the magic of the human indicate, right? If I now after I bind, if I go to definition, actually if I go to control, no, it's in here, sorry. If I go here, I can click on this um, create control rig. Look how cool. It's going to create all the, the rig controls for us. So I'm going to click. And now we have all the, the control rigs. So if you see, we have these handles here. If I move it, you can see that it's moving the character. You can see the I have the handles for the IK. And then I have this yellow bone structure inside for the FK uh, system. So you can do like this. See? So it, cr it has two controls for you. So if I take him, and I want him to dance a little bit. And as you can see, some stuff you see, because I'm using the binding, the default binding, I'm not painting any position or anything on the mesh. If I do extreme stuff like this, you can see that it's breaking here, right? Which is fine. Um, also, like if I rotate the head, for example, the eyes, the mouth, all the stuff is not going t um, together, which is okay because we can always bind the stuff to the bone. So a way to do that is, for example, I can open my bones here again and first just get the head bone, let's say the head here, so only that bone. 
And then I'm gonna select the eyes, the brows, the hairs, the teeth, the tongue. And then I can say bind. And now, just because it was just one bone, hopefully it's gonna work well. Let's see. All right, so now because I put two one bone, and nothing happens. Okay, so another way we can do this, which I like, is we select all the objects that I want, select everything. I'm gonna make a group, and I'm going to parent as a child to the bone itself, to the head bone. So now that I parent, if I move, you can see that's moving. Why is it going so weird, right? It's because the head is not a hundred percent attached to the to the head bone. Okay, so that's why it's going this weird. Like if I get, for example, I'm gonna paint scheme weights here. If I go to paint scheme weights, I can go to paint, right click, go to paint, skin cluster, and I click here. If I open my settings of the skin cluster and I go to the neck bone, here we go. Neck bone. It is, it is not fully, oh no, sorry, the head. You see that it's kind of gray. It's not completely white. So the actually the head bone, which is supposed to move the whole head completely, is not doing so. So a quick quick way to fix that, and that's always, always happens. A quick way to fix that is just, I'm going to select all the vertices of the head. My selection here. I'm going to select all the vertices of the head. Like so. And then I'm going to assign that to the head, the head bone, like completely, right? Completely white. And if you like have no clue what I'm saying right now, you can Google like skin weights, painting skin weights in Maya, things like that. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm saying like, I want that bone to control these vertices 100%. So I'm going to say flood. A lot of people enjoy my voice today. <laughs> Interesting. Well, thank you. Uh, so if I go back here, um, I said flood. So you can see that it's all white. Okay, and I'm going to go to smooth and I'm just gonna do a little bit, whoops, not like that. If I go to the head bone, where is it? Here we go. And I'm just gonna do smooth. I don't know why that's happening. I'm not gonna do any smooth, that's fine. So now, if I go move my head again, you guys will see that the head's gonna go with all the objects. Yay, everything's going together. Woo, 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 woo. Cool. Now, if I select my object, uh, as, you, as you guys can see, like I said, if I move here, my, my hip bone, I'll control one here. Now it starts breaking some stuff. Um, so if you want, there is an easy way to fix that. So it becomes a little cleaner, which is a modifier called Delta Mush. So if I go here to Constraints, not Constraints, um, Deform, there is a thing called Delta Mush. And what Delta Mush basically does is smooths all the transition from your skin weight for what you painted. So if I'm going to click Delta Mush here, you're going to see the difference. You guys remember before? And I have to go after. Do you see that there's a smoother transition here? Because basically what Delta Mush is doing, again, it's smoothing transitions from the skin weight that I painted. And you can change the value too. By default, it comes with 10 iterations. So let's test something on the fingers, for example. So I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to test this finger here. And hopefully, oh, look at that. So it's going very smooth, almost like we don't have those breaks, right, of the the joints, like the, yeah, the knuckles. You can see here, but if I do this, 
and I change my delta merge value, look at the difference. I'm going to change to zero. You see that something changed? It's like a bit like dirty and stuff. It's because, again, the delta merge is going to smooth the transitions of things. So I'm going to go back and put 10. And now you can see this a bit cleaner. And you can put like, sometimes depending on the character, I put like 50 and it goes super clean, but I don't think we need for this game. All right, host said, during production, do you split the head from the body for facial and blend shape? Oh, it's all in one mesh. Uh, it depends on the studio. Some studios, they do a lot of blend shape. Some studios, they, they don't do it that way. But yes, you can always split the head. It'll be easier to create blend shapes for sure. I'll probably do that. Okay, so I'm going to select all this stuff and just reset. The reset is this little guy here. Cool. So we did it. Yay. So let's think about now what kind of pose we want. So normally for poses, I like to look for some reference. Uh, there is this pose, which is a bit complicated on the hands, but we could try it. But we can try the general just arms down pose. Or they could be holding the little booklet, um, reading it. That might be cool. So, what do you guys think? Should we do holding the booklet or... Just with the arms down. With the arms down, it would be obviously very easy to do in ZBrush. We just needed to lower the arm. You can see here, my skin weight is a bit intense on this area for the arm. So we probably going to need to fix this in ZBrush, or we can try to fix the painting in Maya. Um, but yeah, like we could lower this, or we could try to... Um, let's see, holding the booklet, how it would look. So we would do arms like this. Uh, maybe if he's singing, one one chest out to the crowd, dramatic opera. Yeah, that's a good idea, Tia. We can do that as well. So like this, and um, if he's holding the booklet. We could rotate the hands and I'm gonna model a little very quick book here just so we can have an idea so let me get a cube leaves all these faces here now I have a book something like this Again, this is just a placeholder for now for us. Oops. This. Here. So let's test it out with the book. That might be too big. So, yep, and um, yeah, I think that's good, right? And like what Atiyah said is like we push the the chest up, like they're very proud of the singing or something like that. So we can get this control, you see, and we can like. Throw the chest up like so. What version of Maya may I ask? Uh, my version of Maya is Maya 2022. But what I'm showing here can be done since very old Maya. Like, um, I don't know which version they add to Human IK, but I would say for sure since version 2018. So, again, we could do whatever uh, with our body. This is like not going to be too interesting using the rig, but just one thing to show you all, like, um, just the rig working. So we can see that we can place the legs and there are problems, right? Start 
uh, because I did not paint skin weights properly. So, and I'm not going to do it because I told you guys this is a dirty rig. It's not a clean rig. So, uh, but you can see you can kind of play ar around a lot and then you can just clean it in, in ZBrush later. Okay. Um, so, let's get this control here. And this one controls the toes. Look at that. If you want to do a ballet, ballet pose, ballet, ballet. So, like a, like what Atia suggests is like we, we inflate his chest up, um, like so. That's a good idea. And then let's see what we can do with the hand holding the booklet. So. The hand kind of where I want. Rotate a little. Okay, kind of something like this. Rotate more. Push this up a bit also. And then we can rotate the bit more. Okay. And we can just get this one to hold the booklet. All right. Okay. I can rotate this in. So Okay, and here on this part, we can, maybe I did too much, something like this. And then here, we can give a little bit of um, personality as well. Like we could move this finger. Well, actually one thing I like to do is to move this finger in and then this one in. And I kind of leave the, the pinky out a little bit, just to create a little dynamic feeling. And like, okay, we can try, I don't know if it's gonna work. Yeah, we can try to move this in a bit more. Just with the elbow. Yep, something like that. I'm doing myself here on myself just to see how I would click. And uh, unfortunately, I don't know how to uh, mirror positions of controls this is the body part, part yeah I don't know how to do it so we're gonna have to do the other hand which is kind of cool actually because then because I'm for I'm doing by hand that means that it obviously is not gonna be symmetrical so we're gonna create some life let's call it to the model because the uh, it's it's not gonna be symmetrical at all because I'm doing by hand again. So just moving that in. I can also use the bone itself, right, to rotate instead of using the FK, like I said. Something like so. Maybe too close. Again, like I'm, I really want to make it more organic, it's not like super symmetrical. So make sure that I do that. All right, and then we can just get this finger push it down. This. So now, if I hide the controls, we can see what's going on. Uh, I can see some problems, right? It's penetrating, which is not a big problem, but just something to think about. This wrist is penetrating way too much, so we can push this out a little more like this, and then we can rotate the hand in more. It doesn't penetrate as much. And then I'm going to rotate like this. Right. 
cool. And that's kind of where we are. What do you guys think? This is the time where we can experiment. Like I'm gonna um, frame this, keyframe this. So the way I like to do it, I just select all the controls, select all of them, and then I hit keyframe. So it's just S in Maya, and then it creates a keyframe. Well, now I can try other poses and then I can see which one works the best for me. So let's say if I did not have the booklet, uh, I can reset pose. Reset pose. Okay. And now we can try the pose with the arms down. We can move the arms down like this. Um, we can try to close his hands. How do you close his hands? Pretty cool thing in Maya. I can just select the fingers up, 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 up here, and then close it like this. Let's see. Um, I don't think they would close too much like that, make a fist, but I just wanted to show you all like this is a way you can do it. So I'm going to reset and uh, I'm just gonna make the hands a bit more relaxed so I can select everything and just do a little bit of like this. And now the hand feels a bit more relaxed. And then I can take this finger here, relax a little as well. And if I go down now, so, and hide the controls, you can see that his hands feels a bit more relaxed. And I can turn it on here, make the fingers closer so you can see all the power of just playing around with it right we can relax them push it in this one this and relax the other hand come here select just do a little this just relax a bit oops too much. Don't like that. Okay. And if we wanted just before uh, anything, like we could create a little more, not for our character because they're very proper, but we could play with what we call contrapose. So, which is um, you put your hips like one leg, your weight is it's one leg, let's say. So this is gonna be the leg where the weight's gonna go, and then the hips goes down like this, and then this part goes like this. It's called contraposto because it's all opposite, right? So if this motion is going down, the up motion is gonna go up. They're like oh, contraposto. So if I want to put the weight, for example, on this leg, I can move a little bit to the side. You guys can see already that the weight now is on this leg. And then I can rotate to create that feeling. Choop. I'm going to do a lot just so we can see what happens. And then I'm going to take the other control and do the contrapposto where I'm, I'm going to the opposite direction to compensate for that. And now we can just take this, bring the arm back here. And you can see a little bit of like, he has a little bit of motion going on. And again, like, this area is so annoying. This always happens and you have to clean up later. But you can see that there's a little more dynamic feeling to the pose. And you can even play with the rotation as well. So let's say, like, I'm going to rotate this control looking a bit more that way. We could also take this leg, move it back a little. And then this foot, we could rotate out. And again, you start giving more life to the pose of your character. We could get this rotate up a bit. And then again, this one, you can rotate a little bit opposite direction. And it starts giving some life to the character. We could, we could, could do a little of like this hand could be a bit more back like this. And then maybe this hand could be is holding his, his tummy. 
or holding some books or something. So you can see that's pretty good. Like you can you can do a lot with it. Again, we could take the the head and look at the camera. Oops, not like that. Look at us. You know, sassy pose. Yeah, we can make him squat, <laughs> jump, jump, jump. You know, so anyways, you guys get the idea. Uh, what is this control? I don't know what this is. Okay. Yep. That's pretty cool. can play a lot with it and uh, do some poses. But for our, maybe when we do the rebel character, we, we're going to do a very cool pose, right? She's going to be like with her hands up and some weird stuff going on. But for this one, this pose feels pretty good. We could, I think I could rotate this even more. A little more like this. And I'm gonna have to move the book list a little. And also, they could have the legs like a little closer together and not so open the foot. Maybe one foot a bit more open, one a bit more straight. And I think this wrist needs to rotate. Okay. What do you all think? Feels pretty good, right? The pose. So again, I'm gonna select the controls and I'm going to keyframe it because I did some changes. So now I have the pose. But how the hell I put the clothes to follow this? That's a good question. So um, let me save it. And uh, to, to attach the clothes, we're going to have to bring the character back to T-Pose because the clothes were made in T-Pose. Now let's go one by one. So the pins, pins are easy because it's very close to the body. So what we can do is we can copy scheme weights from the body to the pins. So I'm going to select the body, select the pins, and I'm going to go skin. I think that's how you do it. I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Copy scheme weight. Nope. Let me see. My select destination. Maybe it's the opposite. Pan, then body, and then we say copy scheme weights. Let's go to must select the source and the destination skin or components of oh, I think I know. It's because I need to attach the pants to the bones just like I did to the skin. So, okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna select all the bones, like what we did to the body. Select all of them, then the pants, and I'm gonna apply a skin. And now I can select, I think it is the body, then the pants, and I'm gonna say copy skin weights. And I'll never know if I did the right thing, but, now the pins should be moving with the body. Look, like so, which is nice. Now let's see what's next. We have um, this. So here's the interesting thing. This one is super long, taking the whole body. And also it's, you know, it's long here. So it's gonna work very well, but Let's see what's going to happen. So I'm going to, again, select all the bones, select the clothes, apply skin. I know it's going to look horrible. Check it out. Huh? Not bad. But look, if I tick here, okay. Not bad at all. You see, there's some stretching going on. But again, we can use the delta mush. So if I go back, and you're going to select my model, and I'm going to say deform delta mush. And then if I move now, it's a bit softer, see? But I can add more delta mush to it. So if I go back here, I'm gonna take the delta mush, say 30. Start getting a little softer. 
which is nice. So let's see on our pose how much it broke. So if I go back to my pose, too bad. Look at that. All right. The clothes are a bit weird here. I might need to fix that in ZBrush C because uh, the bottom part that I made long is now on the side, is not going down. But that's easy to fix. This area is easy to fix. So that's all good. This area is going to be a bit annoying to fix, like inside here. I'm going to put a bit more Delta Mush. You guys are very quiet. You guys don't have any questions on what I'm doing. Um, okay. It's nice. I think I need all the Delta Mush. One way to check is turn on wireframe, and then we can put like 10. You can see here, like how it's going in. But then if I put like 40, start smoothing a bit more. So, okay. Now let's go back to our pose. Well, T pose, just so we can continue adding stuff to it. So what's next? We have this piece. I don't think it's gonna change much. I don't think it should. So yeah change much i can just move it back because it moved a little bit right so i'm just gonna move it back like this and rotate a little there's something that's just like you gotta work smart like i don't need to change this i don't need to skin it and, and you know so enjoy the stream while trying it out on the, the character nice let me know Ati, if you have any questions okay so what else do we have here? Oh, we have the shoes. So for the shoes, again, I'm going to select everything, reset, and I'm going to um, just bind it to the bone, really. So I just select the bones, select the shoes. Oops, not that, shoes. I'm going to bind it. Now if I go back to my pose, there you go. So just for us to test again, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna start moving some stuff. The shoe is going, beautiful. Clothes are going, pants are going. Everything is going. So that I would say is very successful considering the, I, you know, we didn't organize much stuff for anything. Daria said, exciting things are happening here. We are watching and not breathing. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Oh. We can try something on the hands, just so it doesn't feel so symmetrical. Maybe we can try on this hand here to see something. I'm just going to crawl some of the, the fingers, maybe on this hand. I'm just going to make the fingers a little more relaxed, maybe, or... The pinky, maybe we can like curl like this a little, and then we can just do it like this. I'm just trying to think of things that feels a bit more natural, doesn't feel so copy pasted. We can rotate this one here, like so. Maybe this finger will go down. Yeah, I think we're starting to break a little bit of the idea of the symmetry. What do you all think? And again, because I moved the bones, you can never forget. We got to select everything and keyframe it again, or else it's not going to save what the changes we do. You have to set up collision. Uh, I do not do that because I'm going to fix it a bunch in ZBrush. So this is just, again, like to get a rough idea of the pose. And we can try to refine now some stuff, like make a little more clean. Uh, the connection, the, remember, I say this a lot, but the most important part of a character is the face. The second most important part of the character are, are the hands. So make sure the hands are feeling good, you know? Like, make sure it feels that he's really holding something, you know? And uh, so maybe this finger is a bit more straight here. Maybe for this one, 
I can rotate this in like so. So we gotta we gotta test it out. Use reference if you need to kind of like move things to get a nice feeling. Okay. And again, I'm always selecting and keyframing. I see the character near the rebel girl going a little bit to the side, trying to not stay right next to her. Yes, that's a great idea, Nandu. Yeah, we can we can definitely do a different rig for the one next to her. Right, so let's see if there's anything else we could push on this character. It's pretty good. Will you do slightly different poses for the other kids? We could, because they're the same mask, so we can just do different poses, Daria. So we can certainly do it. Uh, we can do like one... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. But I think this first kid is feeling pretty good. I don't know what else. Do you guys have any idea what else we could do to make it interesting? Might just do a little bit more of like tight, tight, tight hands like this. Again, every time we change now, I gotta keep frame it, or it's gonna go away. This we could potentially later, like uh, you know, break a little bit, like the head, give a little tilt or something. I like to do the that part, like breaking symmetry on the head in ZBrush, because right now we can still work in ZBrush on the head symmetrical, but we could do it. So we could do like. One of them trying to reach. <laughs> Not like that, but you know, we can rotate the eye down, obviously. But <laughs> anyway, cool. So let's say that this first kid is done. Now is a true test. Is this going to import back to ZBrush correctly? Because I moved stuff. So we'll see. Uh, so I'm going to hide the controls. Uh, because they're attached to the bone, we have to select everything and duplicate once, which... No, I'm just going to clean history, so I'm going to save it. And um, the booklet, I'm going to export separate, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to get all the geo. I'm going to clean history. Again, save it before. I'm going to clean history on it. So it's not attached to the bone structure anymore. And then I'm going to only select the geometries. So I'm going to take my geometries here. Hopefully it's going to work. There's always a hope you can have. Then I'm going to export selection inside my FBX. So not OBJ. I always use FBX for this kind of stuff. And I'm going to... Just call it rig02, just so we know the change version. And let's hope for the best now when we go to Maya. So careful now, we got to open, reopen, because I cleaned the history. So this is the part you got to be very careful so you don't lose the history you did. And now let's hope for the best. Well, actually, I don't think. Yeah, because I'm going to have to re-import. So I'm going to go import. Everything is going to come back. Cool. And uh, as you can see, now is the easy part. We can just um, start fixing some stuff. So just, just get here. We can start pushing this stuff down to create the weight here instead of up here. So now is the part that, you know, you're just going to fix the problem. So not too bad, actually. Like, I, I'm always scared of doing demos of rigs because, you know, I don't know. I feel like sometimes they 
might break it on me and I'm like teaching things wrong, but most of the time it goes pretty well and I always get very surprised. <laughs> so create a little sharp bone here. So I hope that was a, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to understand everything I did. Also, it's just a, a, a way for you to see possibilities of doing things. And then on your own time, on your free time, you can just uh, do some studying with Calm, right? This is not a, definitely not a tutorial because I went way too fast. But you can take your own time to kind of experiment, play, uh, look at some tutorials. Like everything I'm showing you all is just, I just stopped it myself one day and went to Google and like, how do I do certain things? How do I do a raid Maya? How do I do this? And then I just study on my own time, you can do the same. Uh, we could try to mirror this here and see what happens. Let me see. Mirror like so. And I'm going to say mirror well. And now I can, well, this arm is a bit higher, so I cannot use symmetry, but at least, you know, most of the job is done here. This. Very necessary knowledge. Thank you so much for a simple explanation. I think my models will be much better now. Yeah, it's fun, you know. Like, like I said, like some stuff might be easier to do it just straight in ZBrush, and I totally get it. But some stuff is, is fun. Like, if you need to do more than one pose, sometimes you know it's better to put the rig even if you're gonna have to clean it in zbrush the main you know hard part of the pose you can do it just in maya or blender or whatever software you like to use and then you you can do multiple poses so let's say like the clothes the only thing also i need to fix on the clothes is remember is this area here in the inside part so I'm just going to make sure that I oops, mask here, invert, invert, and then I can make this mouse back again. Doesn't look like he went in so much. We can do like so. Okay. There you go. I never use this sphere rig if you want to think about it. Well, uh, I'm not actually Logan. I never use the Z sphere rig. I heard great things about it, but me myself, I never used it. Um, never stopped to try, to be honest. I should. Um, down a bit more. And now I can add any detail, anything we want, but we are in a pose, which is nice. And uh, here on the shoes, let's just make sure, obviously, you know, they're not symmetrical, remember, because I um, rotated this foot out. So we cannot use symmetry anymore. Out. And now I'm just going to add the modifier. Dynamic subdivision. And then I'm going to do a bit of thickness, like so. There you go. Now we have a shoe. I might do this shoe to add a bit more detail, to be honest, on the shoe. So this is not the final, final, let's say shoe. For the pants, same thing, I'm going to do dynamic division, add a little bit of thickness. This one, same thing, we can do dynamic subdivision and then add a bit more, a bit of thickness on the clothing. Like so. And then this piece, we didn't change anything on this one, so I can just add subdivision, add some thickness. And there we go. 
Now we have a boy. I can add back the thickness to the hair as well. So I think I was adding the thickness in like this. And uh, I think I did this. Can't remember. Thickness. Yeah. And you can see now with the pose. And we can go back to Maya and export that booklet. Which it obviously, you know, is like I can model it better, obviously, but just for now, just to be a placeholder, we can export. Doesn't need to be FBX because it's nothing special on it. So just gonna do all OBJ. And I'm gonna put here book back. Pin this star and I'm going to import the book. To do there you go. The book. Now we got a pose. We so it took us what an hour and a half to you know put the rig, do the stuff. Too bad. Now we can do any pose we want for the other characters. We you saw like the cleaning was pretty fast, so I think it, I would say it was a successful experience. What do you guys think? Um, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Uh, how long does each character take to complete? Um, it depends. Um, this one we did pretty fast. I think it was like about three to four hours. We finished the the body itself. Um, but it depends on the complexity of the character. This character is very simple, so I wouldn't say it was very complicated to make. <laughs> but yeah, if you get a bit more complex character, it might, might take a little more. All right, so one thing you guys can notice here that we lost our subdivision levels in this one. And um, so I'm just, you know, like everything in life, I'm like, whatever. I'm just gonna readjust some stuff. It's fine. But if we didn't want it to do that, uh, I should have exported a higher resolution of the model because I think level two of the model would have solved it. But that's fine. Again, I'm just gonna subdivide a few times and I'm just going to clean up. Again, it's like, gotta go with the flow. Be, be the water, right? If something went wrong, you just be like water. So what does water does in the river, right? Let's say this is a top view of a river. Okay, top view of a river. And then we have all these little rocks, right? Rock here, rock here. And then the flow of the water is coming. Choo, 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 choo. When it gets to the rock, right? It simply adapts to the shape of the rock and, and then it gets here, adapts to the shape of the water, flows. Let's do another one. This one's coming here, adapts to the shape of the water and keeps going. Adapts, 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 whatever it is. So this is what I mean when I say be water. It's just like you adapt to the problems. You don't like guess, oh my God, I did it wrong. I lost my subdivisions. I'm going to die. No. You just try to flow with the shape of life, you know, like if life puts you a little rock in the middle, you just adapt to the shape and keep going forward. And that's basically what I'm going to do here. I'm going to adapt to the decision I made, good or bad, and continue, you know. Uh, right. How long does uh, I posted my whip of an innocent archetype on Instagram. You said you're curious to see, but probably you haven't seen it. I'm pretty new at 3D, but if you would like to give some advice, of course, Dari, if you don't mind sharing your Instagram handle here, or if you don't feel comfortable, just message me on Instagram directly. Like, you don't need to share your handle here if you don't want to, okay? But if you do, be free. Any of you guys can share it here, actually, because we're all uh, friends, so we can all follow each other, you know? So. What I'm doing here is adapting like the water and just gonna get some stuff. Let's 
see what's going on here. I can go here to the lid and just like sharp a little more. The lid area here. But luckily this character doesn't have a lot that we need to clean. I can, you know. Very simple. So if I want to make things a little sharper, I can just go around and, and do so. And uh, we can obviously come here to the hands, you know, and sharp some stuff later on it. And uh, I, I really like to do a sculpting pass on the hands after I pose it, just to see if there's anything I need to do, you know. I could potentially like mark some of the knuckle knuckle areas like this. Um, love to meet some new artist friends. Yeah, thank you, Ahiki, for sharing. Daria, Daria, thanks for sharing. Cool. Um, yeah, so we can do a little cleanup on the hands at some point. But, but yeah, I'm gonna do a cleanup pass on him, obviously. Like, I don't want his clothes to feel so stiff like this either. So, we're probably gonna try to add some, whoops, what am I doing? Gonna add some, some wrinkles and stuff lightly on it, you know. We can try to add a little light, sort of like wrinkly feeling to it, just to give some, some life. Not, not too much, but like, obviously, like here on the reference, like a lot of wrinkles. I'm not gonna go that far but I might play with some level of wrinkles yeah th this is more what I'm feeling like so maybe I can do this like front cut here this is very interesting let me see what we can do here we can try to do that front cut see how I would do it oops Yeah. Breaking a little bit back there, but might look cool. Right. Um, yeah, we could also make it open a bit more, which is kind of like more like a bell shape here, you see. This is bell shape. I think that could be fun. So I'm going to push it a little more to create that bell shape for the clothes. Thank you, Willa. I'm glad you're liking it. a little bell and then we can think about what kind of wrinkles we're gonna add i was trying to use the the zbrush simulation cloth simulation but i'll tell you guys i'm not very good at them we can try it together again but uh, if you guys want to see me fail hard but i'm not very good at it for sure so if anyone knows any good tutorial for like clothes with the simulation, blender cloth simulation, I would love uh, a suggestion of one because those things I've tried did not work very right in the past. Cleaning here a little. Yeah, I like that bell shape. I might make even the sleeves longer. about the weight of the sleeve like this. And then obviously I'm gonna have to make like this very perfectly sitting on the arm. So there's no like weird gap looking from inside like this. It needs to feel pretty, pretty good. So 
You see, there's a lot of cleanup we gotta do, but I still think it's worth it. The trick said, this looks great. Thank you. No one. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you see here, like, there's some weird sh stuff going on, so. You gotta go with, with love. I'm not doing with too much love, because we're, like, doing together here. Um, but, we'll go with love. And, it's gonna look great. Alright. For example, the character of young Jacob on Seabees, how long did it take to reach the rigging process? Um, can I remember? You mean like on the pipeline, right? Not like me putting the rig on the character to show it. Uh, in a pipeline, it, it takes a while because again, you gotta have to do the proper topology on the model, right? Um, that takes time. And then you send to the rigger and they're gonna test it out some stuff. Uh, see if it's working the way they need. It takes a while. I think those characters, because I was doing this dev, they were very fast, but again, like I only did the viz dev, so um, whoever did the final model, the topology model, probably, probably took that person a while. I don't know who, who did it, but. Yeah, see, I'm trying to create like that real feeling of gravity and touching the body. That's very, very important. Especially again, because the area close to the hand and the hand is the second most important part of the body. So we don't want to make anything look bad on that area. So I'm just going to keep cleaning here. Look, this side looks much, much better than the other side. So again, I can just mirror it, to be honest. And then I can just move this side to place again. Yeah, look how better that feels. And now I can just like, we can make it longer if you want to feel like more stylized, cool feeling. So we can just take this and make it longer like this. One, two. Cool, let's turn on our book. All right, our first character is done. Uh, the poly. I could take this also and just make it a bit closer to the body. This one's pretty good, it's pretty close. I think I'm gonna fire it up, just cover a bit more the neck. All right. Um, cool. So I'm going to keep cleaning up, especially the hand, like I said. Like I'm going to make sure I can see the knuckles so it doesn't feel like sausage fingers like this. So I'm going to take a clean pass on it. And um, we might try to do the, the cloth simulation on the clothing. Should try it. I mean, it's not gonna work because I'm like I said, I don't know what I'm doing, but we can always try just to see how it feels. So let's test it out. So, what I'm gonna do is this I'm gonna hide the booklet, I'm gonna hide this piece. Let's try just the cloth of the, you know, the clothes on the body. So, I'm gonna open my side here. 
and I'm going to get the uh, simulation tab. Dynamics, not simulation, dynamics. I'm going to put here on the side. And let's, let's test it. So I know we want, I want the clothing to collide on the body. So I need to turn collision model, um, collision volume on. So I'm going to turn it on and then ZBrush is going to calculate some stuff for us. And then uh, I know I want the clothes to feel pretty firm. So up here, there's like the firmness. So it's set to two. I'm going to set to the highest amount, which is six. And let's just test it. Run simulation. So as you can see, I don't know very well how to make it work looking good, but it is simulated, right? So we can try to use the, the cloth brushes as well. So if we press B, C for cloth, it's going to have some cloth brushes here. And we can try some some of them see what it's further there's this hook one if i start pulling you see it's like simmy the stuff in it i don't know if the firmness let's try it with less firmness oh look at that it's pretty interesting oh oh whoa, whoa. uh not bad not bad not bad let's see this is what I'm gonna do. I want to control area by area. So I'm going to mask the sleeves. But I want to control the sleeves separate from the dress itself. So let's try something. I'm gonna put a something like this, and then I'm going to we might we might be up to something here. I don't want to sim the top part too much. Uh, I'm gonna keep it the way it is. So I'm going to, going to submit the bottom part. So now I'm masking everything but the bottom part. So, love the drape on his feet. Yeah, let's see what happens now. So if I start pulling now, oops, I'm using move brush. Sorry, let me get the cloth brush. I think there's a move cloth, doesn't it? Not good. Nice work and see ya. Bye. I come here and start pulling this. You can see I'm using symmetry, I should not. You can see that like starting to create some, some interesting fold. Um that's not the kind of fold I want. I want the fold that feels like it's falling, so <laughs> That's great. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, let's see. What if we put less gravity? It's going to go a bit slower. I don't want it to stretch so much. Where do I control that? Strength. Let's see. Self collision, allow shrink, allow spend. I don't want to shrink. Let's see what happens here. The shrinking to adapt to the body. That's interesting. But that's not what we want. I just want some gravity. Yeah, I don't know why it's melting down. If anyone knows, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. What is the strength? Maybe lower the strength? I'm still falling. I might need to do without gravity. Let's see. Let me turn off gravity and then... We can say contract. <laughs> I 
It's very interesting, though. I hope you guys are enjoying what I'm trying to do here. Uh, expand? Yikes. No? <laughs> Pretty interesting. Look at that. What if your mask draw vertical lines? That could, yeah. Let's try that. I'm going to mask draw some vertical lines like this, maybe. And like, let's see what happens. I think I, let me try. Okay. Something's happening. What if we mask this? Yeah, if I clean it now, it might give a little bit of life to it. Not a bad idea. We might need to do by hand, like, a little bit. Ooh. I'm using the cloth hook. I think there's, like, a way also. Let me try one thing and go back. But that's a great idea. I think we can get somewhere with that. But I know there is like um, a transpose that you can use. Let me turn on gravity again. And you can do like, uh, if I go to brush and press T for transpose. T for transpose. There's a transpose cloth. So if you move it, uh, you see that it's like doing some cloth stuff here. Look. So if you kind of move the cloth. Um, what what matters for this? I don't know. I'm still not getting the result I want. We can try to like do some things. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to research a little more. I don't know what I'm doing, but we can always scope, right? So if you don't know how to use it, like myself. We can just sculpt some folds on it, old school style, no worries. And we can like mark a little bit more on the center here. And we can get very similar results. You want to put a pinch. Yeah, not too concerned. I just wanted to show you guys me. Basically, me struggling with trying something new, which all of us do, right? We all have to struggle trying new stuff. So, but I think if I sculpt by hand like so, it's gonna work well. We can try to do like a little fold here. You know, we can put some fold here. It's gonna look cool. I always like when when I. Turn the arm like this. I like to do this like I push it in and then I inflate the top and the bottom like this. It only creates very nice uh, like turning fold. You see that? Let me do it again on the other side so you guys can see what I did. So I'm just going to push it down. I'm sculpting down on the line. And then I do a little sculpting up on the sides of the line like so. And then you can see what happens there. It, it looks pretty juicy, right? Very cool. Cool. So let me turn on the other stuff back. Booklet. And uh, I think that's where I'm going. Let's try to sculpt a bit more stuff here on this one. I think I'm going to try still that kind of like middle line center thing. See if it worked well. Use the pinch. I don't know what happened here that I have a little. Oh, I know what that is because of polish. See, there is a pull on my pathology, so I think I can delete it. Let me see if I can. 
I'll delete edge loop complete. Created some breaks, but okay. <laughs> Deleting a bunch of stuff here. Nah. I can fix that in Maya later. So uh let's just do a few more folds before we end the stream today. And I hope it was interesting uh, seeing the rig stuff there. Um, definitely, I think it was pretty successful the way the rig we did. I forgot to save. Yes, thank you. Let me save it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, we can also looking from the bottom, we can create some some variation like this. Make it more organic. Feel to it. And then now I, I know where I pulled, so I can kind of force it a little more. The folds here on the side, I can force a little. And, uh, you know, I like to work things very stylized and simple. So, like, when I'm doing folds, I tend to be very uh, conservative. I'm trying to break that, be a bit more adventurous with my folds. But in general, I, I tend to be pretty conservative with folds. Just because I like things very graphic. We can go around here and just like try to inflate the sides of this fold, create that feeling here that we saw. So I'm just inflating here to create a little more. I hate that I have this pull. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean some stuff, but kind of like a cool block out feeling of it. Um, I'll pass up. Thank you so much, Leticia, for the amazing tips. Yeah, Atia, keep keep me showing uh, what you're working on. I'll love to keep seeing it. And if you have any questions about the rig, let me know. We can we can play together with it. And have a good night. Um. What's the difference between an OBJ FBX file? That's a great question. Um, so OBJ is like a simpler format that, um, the, the way I like to say it's an FBX, you can have a lot of sub tools inside the FBX. So when I import my FBX, you guys saw that all the sub tools came all organized and nice with the names, just like so, where the OBJ would not do that. Uh, also, FBX, for my experience, sometimes I save polypaint on OBJs and sometimes it doesn't go with it. But the FBX, I never had that problem. Like every time I save, save it as FBX, it goes with everything I want on my mop. So I'll say like FBX is a more organized evolution of an OBJ. But like the exactly like technical explanation, I don't have that. To give it to you. I just know FBX normally is the one I use because it, it saves more parameters that I like to use. That makes any sense. I'm just going to keep going here a little more. So Middle bit here, for I name sorry. Because when I mirrored, the topology did something weird here in the center, and then I, I lost. <laughs> I might have to zero image. Cool. Um, right. I love your tip. I love your tip of pinching the folds from the inside from a few streams ago. Yeah, that's actually a great idea. We can do it. If I select just like a 
view parts. Oops, select here like so. You guys can see in here uh, where it's pitching in and I can just take the pinch and like pinch from the inside and it does a cleaner pinch for, for those folds, you know. So that's a great reminder. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you can import OBJ to the first subdivision level and then you will save all the detailization of the body and have a new pose that is about face details of the kid. Oh yeah, you can do that for sure. It's because I moved the model and um, I kind of lost the placement, but yes, you could have done that. In what POV do you use the brush cup? That's a good question. Um, I normally use um, 85. 85, I use between 50 to 85 to sculpt. 85 is a bit flatter, which I like. Um, normally I render my stuff with flat lenses. It's just my taste. I like flat lenses. Um, so I tend to sculpt with 85 or 70, something high like that. Um, some people, like to sculpt more like 55 but on my my taste is, is a bit flatter so i do obj's of the body only not all sub tools yeah i can do just for the body daria that's um we can try to do that and see if it's gonna work that would be great if it did we can try that um, okay, so we have a few folds going on. I'm gonna put a bit more. We can come over here and like do a little bit of a fold building. Something like this. And if you're like insecure about making folds, like I am, you have to have reference. You have to look at reference on how the folds are gonna go like, for example, we have this more adult kid here. We can see what's going on with the fold with the very long um, sleeve part. Look at that. So we can see that there's a little, um, there's some stuff we could try here if we want it to kind of like do that. Um, there's a fold that's going like this and then it goes in more. Um, so I'll push this in and then I'll try to do that kind of like fold like this. Um, and then we can go in here like that. Start sculpting folds is always, again, like try to find reference and, and play with it. It's gonna make your model so much, that much better, you know, than just like predicting stuff like what I was doing. So like I could flatten here in the top and then do a little like so and then flatten a bit in the bottom here and starts becoming more organic. All right, um, let me try what Daria said. I'm going to go back to, if I'm, you guys, if I'm saying your name wrong, Please feel free to uh, correct me, you know. Uh, I would love to say everyone's name right. If I, if you guys correct me, so you can explain to me the, how to supposed to say it in the box over there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna save as an OBJ. I'm gonna call this body for now, just to test something out. So if I go back to my other model, and let's see if it's going to work. I think it should. It's going to import on top of it. We'll import body. Yep, it worked. Okay, so I have my subdivision now. It only moved, obviously, because I moved in Maya. So we could now move all of this stuff actually up. Yeah, that was a great idea, Daria. Thank you. That was super, super helpful. Now I can keep my subdivision levels. Yay. Push that up. Boom, 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 boom. Right about here, I think. 
Oh shit, I should have duplicated. But I can just duplicate that. Duplicate. This one, I'm gonna go back. Yeah. Alright. Now I have both. I have the pose and I have the T pose with the correct. Alright. My transpose is the wrong one. You guys saw what happened? Go back to regular transpose and I can push this back into position. So. Yeah. Not perfect science, but we're good. So now I can go back to this one and I'm going to import to this one. Why is not? Polypaint. Oh yeah, it is with polypaint. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna append the other one. And there we go. I can delete this one. Delete. Yay, and I have my painting and my creases and everything I did. Soft. Right. That's a great place to stop. I'm gonna save it. And we have our first character. We already have the rig, so we can work on that for the other characters. So next week, I'll probably have them posed. I did not finish our Rebel Girl. As you can see here, I didn't do anything with it beyond what we did last stream. So <laughs> I have a lot of work to do this week. Uh, and then I'll show it to you all. Where do we get next week? And... Um, Probably next week, we're going to model some stage stuff, like model the environment and start placing them on the environment and see what's going on inside Marmoset. Cool. So I hope that was fun. And see you guys next week. Have a good one, everyone. Have a good week. Keep working, keep studying. And don't forget to be like water. And all goes a bit easier. Life. Cool. All right, bye everyone. Now I'm gonna play a cool video from Norman. Here we go.